Hello and welcome to Health Professional Radio. I'm your host, Howard. Thank you so much for joining us for another segment. Going to have a conversation this morning with Mr. Amit Mayer. He's joining us here from Biolog ID. And he's uh, talking about the, the current partnerships with blood product centers to uh, provide real-time visibility of the blood supply. And also talk a little bit about the unique challenges of collecting, storing, and distributing blood products. Welcome to the program, Mr. Amit Mayer. And thank you so much for joining us. Thank you very much, Neil. Now, of course, I did mention that you're joining us here um, from Biolog ID. Give us a brief uh, background and then talk about your role there at Biolog ID. And then let's talk about this um, blood distribution partnership. So Biolog ID is a provider of services in healthcare, particularly for blood collection centers and blood banks. Uh, What we do is we develop and we implement solutions that – basically transform routine processes within this arena into what we call action-generated data. And that data can then be used to support better operational decisions in real time and better strategic decisions over time for both the blood centers and the blood banks. Um, My role within the company is VP of Innovation and Analytics, which is not the most common combination, I get it, but uh, in Biolog, a lot of our innovation is focused on improving the way that we collect data so that we can increase the scope and the accuracy of the data that we make available for our customers. So for us, the combination of innovation and analytics is actually a pretty natural fit. We're all familiar with um, blood donations, the blood drives. They've been going on for for most of our our, our lives. Uh, let's talk a little bit about some of the traditional challenges of um, collecting, storing, and distributing blood products. And then let's talk about how Biolog ID makes that process much more efficient. So actually, that's a, a, it's a very important point to, to talk about. I mean, blood banking in general, like any uh, aspect of healthcare, is under pressure to do more with less. That's true across the board. But when you think about blood banking, that uh, soundbite, do more with less, has another layer of meaning. Uh, Blood bankers need to do more with less also when it comes to the clinical agent itself, to the blood. Um, The need for blood is, is very significant. I mean, every two seconds in the U.S., someone is transfused with a blood product. You can, you can almost imagine the metronome going tuck, tuck, tuck. And every time you hear that tuck, someone is receiving a blood product. That, that's pretty amazing. It, it amounts it to over 20 million units of uh, blood every year, only in the U.S. So the need is substantial. And on the other side of it, the supply is limited by the fact that blood products cannot be uh, manufactured. They can only be donated. So those donors, those of us who, you know, go out and during a blood drive or, or, or drive themselves to a collection center and donate blood, we are the only source of this very important clinical agent, uh, very needed by our communities, our family, our friends. So just to be clear, when we're so, talking about any blood product, anything that is a blood product, whether it be plasma or uh, platelets or anything, has to be derived from first donated blood. Exactly. Exactly. You're absolutely right. Um, And in this reality where the uh, clinical agent that you're working with is so uh, limited in the amount that you can get um, and the need is so significant, any technology that can help blood bankers make better decisions to improve their uh, the efficiency of their products, uh, the efficiency of their processes, increase the availability of blood products uh, for the patients that need them. Anything that can help with that is of significant value. And, and we find, uh, find ourselves very lucky and very fortunate to be able to support this very unique industry. Well, with everything having transformed basically to to digital technology and uh, telemedicine. Everything is digital. Why hasn't blood banking done more digitally being such a significant part of the medical process? So, uh, again, a very good question. Um, Blood banking has done a significant uh, part of the way toward digitization, but um, there are uh, a lot of constraints that blood banking needs to adhere to. This is a very potent clinical agent, a very 
a, a very sensitive one that needs to be taken care of and manufactured, kept, stored, distributed in very specific ways. That's create a, that creates a lot of um, uh, barriers for, for innovation. One of the things that we try to do is we try to make our technology such that would be incorporated into the existing processes rather than force blood bankers to change their processes to accommodate the technology. So when we talk about action generated data, what we do is we leverage the existing activities of the blood bankers when they put products into a refrigerator or an agitator or a freezer, when they take them out, those actions are being registered automatically and creating data seamlessly without forcing them to do anything beyond the very challenging job that they're already um, facing. So that is a very natural, a very easy way to increase the scope of the data, the accuracy and the completeness of the data that is available to them. And that can help support, take this you know, very important cascade of activities to another level of uh, um, data-driven decision. When it comes to blood banking and distribution, especially during a time of emergency, say COVID-19 pandemic or something similar, how crucial is making sure that the correct products get to the correct centers, to the correct patients in need? So, uh, again, an, an inf- insightful question. We were in a position where COVID-19 hit when we were asking ourselves, how can we pitch in? What can we do? You know, our industry is struggling in this in this uh, pandemic, and we asked ourselves, what can we do to help? And we realized that solutions that we already had for fresh frozen plasma could be with some, you know, very dedicated, very uh, um, educated effort um, be transformed to support the collection and manufacturing and distribution of convalescent plasma called CCP for short, COVID-19 convalescent plasma. Mm-hmm. Um, And some of the centers that we implemented this solution in told us, hey, the fact that we had visibility to our labeled inventory was very valuable. But the fact that we were able to put on an RFID tag early in the process, right after the collection of the the plasma, and give them visibility to basically tomorrow's inventory and be able to talk to the hospitals, the blood banks on the hospital side that require product and be able to say more than, sorry, I don't have product right now, but to look at, to into the future, basically, into the work in progress inventory and say, hey, I will have this available for you tomorrow. That played a significant role in being able to manage the scarce inventory in that time of uh, emergency. Now, you've recently partnered with uh, another uh, organization. Let's talk briefly about this partnership and then give our listeners a website where we can learn more about Biolog ID online. So we've we've been partnering with several blood centers in in the U.S. Hawksworth in Ohio is one, LifeServe in Iowa. Uh, We recently, one of our recent blood centers is is LifeShare in Louisiana. Uh, This is a blood center with uh, eight different uh, sites across the state of Louisiana. Uh, and we were able to come in and implement our CCP solution for them. Uh, they've been using it for the last several months. Um, and we're talking about extending now for other types of blood products beyond CCP because uh, there was a, an appreciation for the digital visibility and what it allows uh, the blood bank uh, and blood center people to do mm-hmm. with their product, how it can improve the way that they're using their products, uh, and they want to extend the value of this beyond CCP into other products. Um, so that's just one example of uh, a recent partnership. Um, you asked about learning more about Biolog ID. I think the best way is our website. It's biolog-id.com. And that would have a lot of links to different uh, press releases, videos, and other materials that uh, would be interesting, I think, for many of your listeners. Great. Well, Ahmed, I appreciate you joining us here on Health Professional Radio. Quite informative. I'm hoping we'll uh, speak again. It would be my pleasure. And thank you very much. Thank you.
You've been listening to Health Professional Radio. I'm your host, Neil Howard, in conversation with Amit Mayer, VP of Innovation and Analytics at Biolog ID. Audio copies of this program are available at hpr.fm and healthprofessionalradio.com.au. You can also subscribe to the podcast on iTunes, listen in, download at SoundCloud, and be sure and subscribe to our YouTube channel at youtube.com, Health Professional Radio.